on today's episode. Welcome. Here I'll show repairs I've done and share the techniques and tools that I use. If you find this video valuable or even entertaining, uh, please subscribe as it really helps. It's great to get your feedback, so leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that like button. Also check out the description below because there'll be additional information and some useful links. So why build a, a Geiger counter? What's the interest? Well, there's three reasons personally. Um, this was my father's uh, photo album. He was with the British Pacific Fleet, um, supporting the Americans, uh, preparing for the invasion of Japan, uh, which uh, which never happened uh, due to the obviously the dropping of the atomic bombs. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to have my father's diary for that period as well. And Wednesday, August the eighth, uh, here. Uh, this was obviously uh, just after the bombing of Hiroshima and just before uh, Nagasaki. So we did nothing today for some unknown reason, possibly because they have dropped the first atomic bomb in Japan on the city of Hiroshima, wiping out 60% of that city. The weather is perfect here and I spent the afternoon sunbathing. Well, sadly that uh, may be part of the reason why he, he died at a at an early age of, uh, of 68, we'll, we'll never know. So this was my father on the, on the left here, um, strangely in a bar. I wonder if that's a, a family trait. Um, later in 1945, uh, my father's hand again, ruins of Nagasaki. Um, they went in, in November and, um, and toured the, uh, the, 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 the city to be shown the uh, the the impact quite literally of of, of the bomb, um, um, I, I guess to try and uh, help some of the civilians as well. Uh, so there they are on the on a on a lorry um, being driven round the the city. So that was uh, that was one thing that, that uh, interested me in uh, in, in radiation. Um, secondly, um, where I am now uh, in the south of Spain. Um, there was a, a bad accident in 1966. Um, a American B-52 bomber um, collided with its refueling tanker over the coast, and in the ensuing crash, the uh, four uh, atomic weapons that were on on board the uh, the B-52, uh, one uh, was dropped into the into the ocean, but three actually landed on on the land and uh, two of those actually exploded now obviously it was only the uh, the conventional munitions that uh, that detonated but that um that resulted in in the contamination by plutonium of some two and a half uh, square kilometers of uh, of the coast and they're still debating now as to uh, whether the the radiation levels are, are safe in that area or not so i thought i might take a visit down there and uh, and check that out. And thirdly, um, it's relatively well known that uh, granite is uh, is radioactive, but also um, so is is marble. And marble is another uh, product of this area of of Spain. There are many marble quarries. And uh, outside my village, on the on the way in, there's a a sizable chunk of marble, um, otherwise known as a work of art. I think. And uh, I'm going to check that out to see if there's any, any noticeable radiation coming from that. So here is the, uh, the Geiger counter board. Uh, it's not really a kit. Obviously, it comes uh, assembled, in, including the, uh, the tube. And um, there is a dearth of information and hardly anything on the, on the Banggood um, website that's of, of any great use. It, and the information it does give you, uh, it says to, to search Google for SPI example for radiation logger Arduino, um, which is of absolutely no use whatsoever. Um, if you're a Monty Python fan, you may remember their explanation of how to play the flute, which is just to blow in one end and move your fingers up and down the outside. So that uh, information is about as useful. It doesn't tell you what the inputs and outputs are, I and mean, obviously. Here it's labelled ground 5 volts and what appears to be V in. And then there's just two connections here. 
called P100. Uh, so what's all that about? It has a, uh, a jack socket for outputting the, the audio. Um, when, a, when a pulse of radiation is detected, you get a little click from the, uh, from the, the, the little buzzer here and the LED flashes, but that's about as exciting a, a, as it gets. Um, one thing that could get exciting is, if you're not aware, these tubes run at somewhere around 400 volts. So you don't want to be touching uh, this when it's when it's plugged in. So all it's going to do is to sit there and, uh, and and tick. And obviously, we want to be able to do something more meaningful, such as measure the uh, the, the counts per minute and uh, and hopefully work out from that uh, what's known as the uh, the dosage. Now, to work out the dosage, you need to find the data on the on the tube. Now, the the tube that's included here. We can just see here that it's uh, referenced as a J305 beta. Now uh, you can find the, the data for that uh, on, on various websites and you can find its characteristics. Knowing its characteristics from the counts per minute, you can work out um, the number of sieverts, which is the dosage. Now if it's sieverts, you're almost already dead. Uh, it's usually in micro sieverts, uh, micro sieverts per hour. So um, what we're going to do is to, um, to get this board and try and work out what these connections uh, actually do. So here temporarily uh, it's just connected up to the uh, batteries. Uh, these uh, battery box was supplied with the, with, with the kit and if we switch it on. I don't have any source to uh, excite it with but um, if we see a, a flashing here and we can hear a, a small tick then uh, that's doing its job. Uh, I didn't mention earlier that the tube itself is is polarized, so this is uh, there's a little plus sign on this end of the tube, and there's a plus sign on the on the circuit board. So if you get a problem, it may just be worth checking that. And for the interrupt output, um, I think we can safely assume that this is ground plus five and what is called V in is in fact the, the interrupt. These two pins here, I believe, are for um, some sort of um, PC connection or data logger. I, I don't really know. But um, V in is what we need to, to take a look at. Um, if only we had an oscilloscope. Well, that's a relief. Um, so, a little oscilloscope. I uh, showed you how to, to build that in uh, in my previous video and I'll link to that in the description down there. Um, so what I've got is the um, the earth of the scope obviously to the ground and the probe is on uh, the V in and on the oscilloscope we can see uh, the, the resultant uh, trace. Now um, the, the trace that we can see um, hopefully you can hear the, the clicking at the same time. Uh, that's refreshing and we can see that it, uh, this is on, on one volt per division and 0.1 of a millisecond. So we can see that the voltage only drops maybe three, three volts or so and then rises again and it's obviously quite a short, uh, quite a short pulse. Uh, I wouldn't really want to be putting that directly into uh, an Arduino to try and count it as it's as, as rough as a badger's behind, I think we say. So as we have seen, the, uh, the interrupt output from, uh, from the unit is uh, this rather saggy looking uh, waveform which we really need to, to square up um, so that with the Arduino can uh, count it uh, accurately. Now, I've also taken uh, a similar trace on my, my posh scope um, just to, to, to show you and uh, give you the, the measurements there. It's around three, 330 nanoseconds wide and about 3 volts deep as we could see with our, our regular little scope here. 
Now, to square that up, um, the, uh, the common way to do it is just to use a, a little 555 timer circuit, so it's just a little integrated circuit set up as a, as a monostable, that is like a, a one-shot for every trigger pulse going in, you'll get one square wave coming out. And in true Big Clive style, um, here we can see the, the arrangement. Our input uh, waveform just goes in here. Um, so that looks like that. And what we need out is a nice square wave. Now, the period or duration of this wave is not desperately important, but uh, if we choose something around the one millisecond uh, value, then um, that should do what we need. So the configuration of this circuit, oh, and uh, just one thing, extra geek points, if you know why it's called a 555 timer. Moment to think there. Uh, it's because between the positive rail and the negative rail in, inside, there are in fact three 5K resistors that form a, uh, a voltage divider network. So there you go, you can bore your friends tonight. So um, the, the formula for working out, um, sorry, rewind, um, there's a capacitor here which is just a decoupling capacitor, so that's 0 0.01 microfarads. The timing capacitors or the timing components is, are this capacitor here and its uh, resistor in, in, in series. Now it's fairly easy to choose the capacitor. Um, so if we choose that to be say one microfarad, then we need to work out what the resistance is to give us our, our one millisecond. And the formula here is the resistance is equal to the time that we want divided by 1.1 times the capacitance. So the capacitance in this instance is one microfarad and the time is one millisecond. So we can see that that comes out to uh, 909 ohms. Now I'm going to use 1k ohm uh, because it's not desperately needed for this to be exactly one millisecond, um, but um, it will be there or thereabouts. So let's get that um, circuit breadboarded up and then we'll see how that works for us. And there we are. So uh, the little circuit board here, I've put um, a little power module on there that's now taking our, our battery voltage and converting it down to, to 5 volts for both the 555 timer and via this cable, um, which again was supplied with the module, to, to, to power the, the module itself. So uh, it's difficult to see the little uh, 555 timer buried down on the, on the board there, but Hopefully you can see there's a, the 1K resistor there, one microfarad capacitor, and the decoupling uh, 0 0.0, one microfarad. So if we now switch the, uh, the unit on, everything on by this here. Now on the oscilloscope, uh, we can see our nice clean output waveform. We can tell by the voltage is still one volt per division so now we have two four five volts um, which is uh, excellent and you can see it's a nice square shape and it's one millisecond per division so uh, if we just perhaps move that across a little we can see that it's a, a tad over the um, the one milliseconds if we change the seconds per division to 0 0.5 a millisecond and then back to the horizontal position we can see that it's um, at uh, 0 0.5 milliseconds nearly one and a half milliseconds but that's going to make no, no difference to us and I've also shown you a comparison on my posh scope of, uh, of the input and uh, an output so Having uh, squared that up, now it's time to connect this to uh, an Arduino and um, see if we can detect um, those pulses. So here's our simple um, Arduino uh, test code just to test that the, the interrupt is being detected. And to 
indicate that we're just going to flash the onboard um, LED on and off uh, briefly. So the first thing we need to do is define our, our LED. Now um, each individual Arduino um, LED could be on a different um, pin. Uh, for example on the Uno that I'm using at the moment it's on pin 13. Uh, but if you don't actually know uh, you can use this function here, LED underscore built in. So, and that will um, resolve itself to the, uh, the LED on your particular board. So pin mode LED built in output. Um, the second line here is obviously the interrupt itself. So we attach the interrupt and we tell it which pin we're going to. So it's going to be pin 2. And then the argument here is uh, what sometimes referred to as the uh, the ISR or the interrupt um, interrupt routine, and we want to detect the rising edge. So the square wave that we've produced um, produces a rising uh, edge on on the pulse, and that's when it's going to trigger the routine count pulse. So down here, count pulse. Um, simply does a digital write to the built-in LED, turns it on, has a short delay, and then turns it off. So uh, very, very simple indeed. And uh, let's get that put onto the board and uh, we'll test it. So let's just upload the, uh, the sketch to the Arduino. Uh, we'll just verify first, built and braces. nothing to be concerned about and the upload is complete so now we can plug it in and and test it so here we can see the general ar arrangement with the Arduino board um, connected in and simply has 5 volts power on and the interrupt pin 2 which is still displayed on the oscilloscope there and as the uh, detector is, is, is clicking uh, we can just about see that the, the LED on, on board is, is flashing as well. Let me just zoom in on that for you. So here we can see the onboard LED uh, flashing in, uh, in sequence with the, with the pulse received. Uh, I had to turn the, the, the light down, but hopefully we can, we can see that now. So all is good. So the next thing to do, um, there'll be a part two where we'll dive deeper into the Arduino code and uh, get our, our counts per minute calculated and get some calibration done to try and get our conversion to uh, micro sieverts per hour and uh, go out in the field.